We'd like to draw the Lewis structure of um, CH2N2 and include any formal charges. Okay, so um, you'll notice that this is an halogen, so it can't do what I had described for CH2Cl2. Um, if, for whatever reason, we did decide to do that, let me just prove that it'll just yield something incorrect. So we'll start with C in the middle, H, 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 and then we replace two with what we actually have. And then we just need to remember our valence electrons. We have two plus 10 plus four, yielding 16 electrons. Let's fill in everybody's octet. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So clearly this does not work. If we start talking about double bonds around the carbon, let's see if that does work. We have um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. The electrons all make sense, but this would imply an expanded octet around um, the carbon, and that is not the best. And so instead of having this structure, because we technically cannot have an expanded octet around carbon, doesn't have enough orbitals to um, permit it. And so instead, let's indeed leave our two um, hydrogens attached to the carbon, attach the nitrogen, and then attach another nitrogen to um, that nitrogen. Fill in all of our octets. And we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Remember, we had 16 valence electrons. And so obviously, this still not is permitted. Let's put a double bond around these two. Because carbon likes to have four bonds, nitrogen likes to have three. Just give them both what they want. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So this is clearly still not enough. And so let's have another double bond here. Because, again, we had too many electrons. And that will leave us with this structure. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Our valence electrons are all taken care of. Let's check our formal charges. On the hydrogens, we have 1 minus 1, 0. On the carbon, we have 4 minus 4, 0. And on the, let's call this nitrogen 1, nitrogen 2. On nitrogen 1, we have 5 minus 4 leaving a positive one. And on nitrogen two, we have five minus four minus two, leaving us with a negative one. So we'll have a negative charge here and a positive charge here. And the question me mentions resonance structures. So what that means is, can we move any of the electrons either in lone pairs or in these double bonds um, into a configuration that is different from this one, but still maintains this formal charge of zero and still maintains the 16 valence electrons. And indeed that can be done if um, instead of having this, we had C, H, N, you move the two electrons in this double bond into a bond between these two nitrogens. And then you move one of these lone pairs to the carbon instead. So you still have the same number of lone pairs, the same number of bonds, the same number of electrons, therefore. Let's double check that our formal charges are all okay. So the formal charges are allowed to move, but the net has to remain the same. And so on our hydrogen, we'll still have 1 minus 1, giving us a 0. On our carbon now, we will have 4 minus 3 minus 2, and that's going to give us a negative 1. So we can see the negative charge has moved to the um, carbon. Yeah, and then let's double check on our nitrogen. Um, so again, we have N1 and N2. On nitrogen 1, it is going to be 5 minus 4, leaving a positive 1. And on nitrogen 2, it is going to be 5 minus 3 minus 2, leaving a 0. And so we'd be left with this structure. Is there anywhere else where we can move any electrons? The answer is no. We know that if we have the lone pair on this nitrogen, then we get the incorrect, uh, the valence electrons don't check out. That's what we had initially. And if we have the lone pairs on hydrogen, that simply doesn't make sense because hydrogen can't um, have that many electrons on it. 
So our two structures are going to be um, these two and on this one the um, charge there we go and so those are our two resonant structures and that's it